a lifetime of sexual abuse. He molested all three of the boys, stabbed them both to death. I believe he snapped. There was so much the jury never got to hear. No, I don't think he should spend the rest of his life in prison. And this is why. I had no conscious thought when I was on fire. No, absolutely none. It was before the fire. When I came to and I was still on the ground putting the fire out, I regained consciousness. I was basically sitting on the ground with my legs stretched out and I was patting my right shin. The jeans to my left leg were already kind of um, solidified into my flesh and the right was on fire. Um, I didn't actually feel a thing because of the adrenaline rush, I guess, or the shock of coming out and not fully understanding mentally what was going on. Um, and as I stood up, I started to feel as though my skin was cracking and stretching, almost as if I was being flayed. Um, and I looked down and my thermal had basically melted into my waistband and my stomach. So I went ahead and pulled the uh, thermal away from me and lo and behold, to my surprise, my skin came off with it like mozzarella off a hot pizza. So uh, I basically got undressed walking through the backyard and I was eventually butt naked walking into the house, ran upstairs, um, skin starting to feel like I'm steadily going from like a sauna to a sweat lodge to lava being pulled on, poured over me. And I yelled at John to wake up because this was obviously a day that he wasn't at work. And um, he asked what happened and I yelled to him. Um, I set myself on fire and he said, well, go take a shower. And I said, it's already been lit. And he said, well, go get in the water, I'll get dressed. Instead of calling 911, it was a, hey, I'm not gonna waste money on you. You're, you know, you're a complete dumbass. Uh, you, you know, you, all this suicide and your poster child and the poor you. And it's all the stories he ever cried to me. And, you know, once I got in the shower and corrected the water temperature, I never wanted to get out. The pain went away with ice cold water. Um, until John said, hey, it's time to go. And uh, I basically told him to give me a sheet. I soaked the sheet uh, in cold water, which was already as hot as my body temperature before I hit the front door. And he basically yelled at me all the way to the hospital about wearing a wet sheet in his car um, as he drove down um, a street for five, 10 miles that had stoplights everywhere. He yelled at you for having a wet sheet in his car? Oh, absolutely. That was John's normal character. And, you know, he drove me with, I guess, what he thought would have been the closest hospital, which was way over in Kirkwood. Um, but when I got there, um, he basically stopped the car at the emergency thing and said, walk, you know, go in. And I'm just like, what? You know, I'm a young teenager and I walk in the emergency room and I'm wrapped in a towel but, or a sheet but naked. It's see-through. And they're just like, what's wrong with that? I was like, I, I got set on fire. And then finally a doctor pulled up and uh, saw the severity of it. And uh, they started putting literally, like, literally like frozen towels on my skin that were melting in like 30 seconds. Uh, and then I felt, I saw the doctor with a big syringe, uh, a hypodermic needle. And after a, a sharp poke, I think maybe a couple seconds later, I was out and I was uh, air vac to St. Louis, uh, um, Cardinal Glennon uh, Children's Hospital in St. Louis, where they have an emergency burn unit. And the whole time that you were in the hospital, the only thing that John cared about was the fact that you had homework. Wasn't that right? Yeah, he he came in and he cussed me out, yelled at me, you know, how can you do this? Uh, you make me look so bad, you know. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he um, he put up this little, uh, like one of my school, one, it wasn't my school bag, but it was like a duffel bag. And I was like, what's that? And he's like, well, I, I, uh, I went to school and made sure I got you a couple weeks of your homework so you don't fall behind. And what John had actually done was gone to Webster Groves High School and talked to my principal, Patricia Foss. Who, and um, he walked in and basically told her uh, her words on the, on the stand when I went back to the federal courts were verbatim. Oh, David's done it now. Now he's the poster child for suicide. He set himself on fire. And he requested a couple weeks of uh, homework from my assignments. And um, 
even though she didn't want to, she agreed and she gave them to him. And uh, from what she had said, she contacted DFS while I was in the hospital and nothing was still done. So, so I know she contacted DFS the when the suicide note was found and nothing and was done. Time. And this and is nothing was done. And, a, and a second time having lit yourself on fire and still they didn't do anything. They did absolutely nothing. And while I was there is when um, I guess Miss Voss and uh, my, my school counselor made their contacts with DFS and not one DFS worker came down at least the 30 days that I was there. I never saw anyone from Division of Family Service. But it's the only life I've known since I was born. And then after that, you went back to John, right? Um, I, I had to go right back to John and it all started over again. You must have just died inside. I've wanted to die every day since I was eight years old. I wake up battling suicide every day. Still. I, I dream about, you know, what's that day going to be like when I wake up? And one of the first thoughts on my mind aren't wanting to just ascend to heaven and just pass away. I've never been heard. And now all of a sudden, the world's waking up and they're hearing me. And it's like, people are like, man, where have you been? And it's like, it's not where have I been. It's where has everybody else been every time I've cried for help? And now nobody wants, you know, everybody wants to help. It's not in a position to do anything. And everyone that's in a position to do anything, I'm just a small fish in a big ass ocean and they don't care. Subscribe now to Crime 411 so you don't miss out on episode four when David Barnett's best friend Jason Kingston joins me for a tell-all episode of the David Barnett story.